Welcome to Top Shelf, where we seek truth, opinion, perspective, and we seek solutions. Yo, man, we are back once again, giving you another Top Shelf episode. I'm excited. Yo, you know what I think about, fellas? I was looking at a picture from our first season Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, and I was like, man, we've come a long, long way, Mm -hmm. for real, from that first day we start recording. Y'all ever ever be reflecting like that? I do. Um, I, I kind of look at like just the journey that we did when we started last year because we started like we did our first recording in January 2021 we started the idea in 2020 but we started recording in January 2021 and Mm -hmm. just to see how much we've grown you know and just still doing it man so yeah definitely I I look I like to look back at certain things just kind of as a reflection dope 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 yeah what about you Ant? um same um, it's like to see it grow, and then like to see, I like to see the numbers. Like um, we are giving you guys a podcast uh, every week, and we're not stopping, and we're not planning to stop. So it's like I like that consistency. Can't stop, won't stop. Love That's it. it. And the one thing we can't stop is praying. Like that. <laughs> so so let's get into that. I'm. A, I definitely pray for us today. God, we just thank you so much for today. Uh, We just want to have attitude of gratitude, like I've been saying. Uh, We're grateful that we woke up today. We're grateful for the clothes on our back, the shoes on our feet, Mm -hmm. the roof over over our heads, because we know that these are sometimes things we take for granted. We don't ever want to take any of these things for granted. We thank you so much that you have protected our families, that you've protected us each and every time that we go out. I pray that you protect Jeff as he travels. You know, I pray that you protect our wives as they travel, you you know, and God, we just thank you so much for all that we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, Amen. my brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, y'all, um, we all are on social media. Whoa, Whoa. <laughs> Anthony got that. Anthony got that new new. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony got that, that. that. Anthony, uh, what is that? That's that's the cause of debt. <laughs> Anthony, stay in. That's all I got. <laughs> get you some Jamaican soup and Sun, put, get facts, it together. Facts. I'm telling you, that heal you heal up everything. Pour it up. Let me tell you, get Let's you some that soup, white though. Jamaican rum. Put that, Ooh, that, that, that clear tea. you out. That Talk thing to, knocks you out. That thing is good. to me good. nice. So, word that's, up. It, that's it. And, and take a sick day tomorrow, bro. I wish. <laughs> Anthony said, can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> I was, I was, uh, but what I was saying was uh, before was, I, you know, I was looking at social media. Do y'all ever get like overloaded with all the information coming at you at one time? Um, so, yeah. with social media and with just the internet, Google and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I definitely do, man. It, it's it's overwhelming to the point at times, like I feel like I got to take a break mm-hmm. or I have to stop following certain um, pages or mm-hmm. um, because yeah. it's, it's it's too much, man. It really, Bruh. really is like to the point where you don't know what's what's truth and what's what's not truth. Right, right. I think there's just there's always like because we we have so much access to information. It's on our phones, it's on our watches, it's on our tablets, in our computers. Hell, you can even see news in some dashboards in a car in a car. Like you can access Wi-Fi. Like you can. Right. We have we're connected in so yeah. many ways. No matter how much like the thing I love about Anthony. Anthony, like you take time to go do hikes, so mm-hmm. you disconnect from things. To go get away from and Jeff things. and Jeff takes yeah, hikes and Jeff, too. And Jeff yeah. takes hikes. Whoa, whoa. But Jeff <laughs> get it now. doesn't mean now I take hikes. Jeff, Jeff ain't no. hiking. No. <laughs> Jeff goes to the gym. How about that? Jeff goes to the gym. That's yeah. his thing. So That's he true. shuts off and he works out. You know, like every everybody everybody <laughs> has they thing. Anthony, like for me, I'll go sit down with this hiking thing, man. Yeah, bro. <laughs> you need to, you need to take a hike. 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know why Anthony <laughs> gives me the wood so much, man. Poor, Anthony, Anthony, know. chill, chill, chill. Um, <laughs> thank God we are recording this from the comfort of our homes. Exactly. And, and not next not next to Anthony, because whatever that is. I don't want it. Anthony, you better wear it. Uh, I was sick last week or two weeks yeah. ago. I was sick. So listen, there's something going on. To all of our village, make sure y'all cover y'all necks, cover y'all mouth, Thanks. cover all of that, and be careful out there. It was 80 degrees on Saturday, bro. It's <laughs> weird, and now it's 50, and, yeah, and so that, and it's dropping enjoy. at night. So oh what are we doing? Uh, but I want to switch it back to, like, the information that we go through, like, you know, the back and forth, and how do we decide what is real? So there's a lot of fake news out there, though. You know, there's a lot of information that is completely false. And what this what this completely false information does, it slows down the process with a lot of different things. Like, think about it. if there's an investigation, like a murder investigation, or if there's a how, like if there's a, a an investigation of some sort that is like criminal related, mm-hmm. like if some if the police get a false tip. And they follow that lead, it'll slow down the process from finding who the culprit is. Mm-hmm. So, and, and, and another thing this uh, false information does is it creates this illusion. Think about all the death hoaxes of celebrities we've seen. Like, I've, I've, I've thought so many people was dead that wasn't. Mm-hmm. And, and then those people will pop up and be like, I'm not dead. I am fine. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, I'm like, that's so crazy to me. Why would you that's lie so about weird. somebody dying? <laughs> it is weird, bro. It's it's the media. They send you into uh, like a panic and a frenzy, right? Mm-hmm. The biggest example I can give you, I'm going to give y'all straight up and down, like the whole Jesse Smollett thing, right? Oh, yeah. So for me, I ain't going to lie. In the beginning, when I was listening to the case itself, I was like, yeah, I'm going to put up. I'm with, I stand with Jesse because this is like... This this is this sounds like something that is crazy. And mm-hmm. it was during a time where all the marches was going on, right? Yeah. And and I said to myself, yeah, I'm gonna support them. I'm gonna put it up on my page. And before I did, something was like, wait. And I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna listen to figure out if this is real or not. Then I start hearing more stuff and I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. This sounds kind of off. Mm-hmm. And as it developed, there's so many other parts to that case. And, you know, it it really unfolded really weirdly. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of uh, issues that Jesse didn't address that, you know, it, it was just like a lot of parts to it that he didn't speak about. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then I'm like, see, that's why I'm glad I didn't jump. Have, yeah. y'all, had, have y'all had moments? Do y'all have any examples of moments like that? Yeah, what false definitely. information got you? Yeah, there was one time. I, I don't remember the exact post. And ever since then, I, I kind of like been very careful what I repost um, mm-hmm. until everything comes out. So this was like around the time of Trayvon Martin. Um, and the post was related to him. But I just remember it was just during that time where everything got heightened. Everything was pretty sensitive when it came to Black Lives and the whole Black Lives Matter movement was really starting to take off and so forth. And somebody had posted, um, I think it was on Facebook. Somebody had posted a thing on Facebook. It was, it was regarding another, um, it was a statistic regarding police, the police force, right? And it was a t- statistics, statistics came and talk. And it was, it was pertaining how much um, black people get arrested compared to white people, right? Mm-hmm. But here's the thing, which we know like, statistically showing that there because of the um population there's more white people get arrested than black people but as far as like when you kind of break it down to like the comparison of two groups Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying based off the actual numbers like if you have let's say five million black people five million white people it shows that we get treated much more worse right Mm -hmm. right so those are facts but the thing that the person posted they had a it was a flawed information right because it it also added um i can't remember what else was added to it i want but it was something else that was added to it right and i reposted it and i was like see look 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 and i remember this lady commented on my thing and she was like this information is wrong and i was i was 
going to respond back to it. I normally don't do the back and forth in social media. And then when I looked at it, I was like, something told me to like kind of do a little bit of more um, research. Oh, it was also a conviction rate. The conviction rate was 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 off, right? Right. And when I looked into it, I was like, oh shoot, the city was right. And so I was like, man, here I am getting caught up into like the emotional posting and reposting and not necessarily double checking, fact checking to make sure what I'm putting up is actually correct. So ever since then, I have completely um, slowed down on what I repost or post unless I know it's 100% truth because there are a lot of times, like you said, Fred, where we'll see something or somebody post something and it can mm-hmm. be partially true, but that's not the whole story. And the whole story, the actual whole story, not 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 the whoever controls the narrative, not the like, you know, the perception or the opinion, but the actual full facts of the full story, that could change the whole perception of how you want to look at a case or a situation or a post you know what i'm saying so i've just been very more cautious um with that right and and i think the thing is you have to be like diligent because now everybody a reporter (coughs) everybody is a reporter and and anthony i'm praying over your health right now uh we're gonna put we're gonna put you on a sick and shut in list (laughs) Um, so (laughs) you know we love you bro (laughs) <laughs> um, I think the most recent thing that we've seen is this this whole thing happening with Kyrie, where mm-hmm. Kyrie Irving, um, who plays for the Brooklyn Nets, and the thing is, it's like he wa- he watched a documentary that spread it, it spread it some false information. It spread some false information. But right? he didn't watch it first. He just posted yeah. it. He didn't he watch just it. Po- well, he, he didn't watch, watch it, it afterwards. Yeah, he watched it afterwards. My bad. My bad. So he. He he, he didn't it sponsor it. He didn't, he didn't finance sponsor it. it. Now 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 here's the thing though, right? Because he posted it, right? Because he posted it, and and the thing is, the documentary isn't credible uh, because they trying to say they try to say like, hey, the Holocaust didn't happen. Now we all know, we all know anybody that has a history book know that the Holocaust happened. There is film footage of it. There's documents. There's you know, people that lived through it. So we know that it happened, right? Um, but the thing is, because somebody can post things up, or because we have access to, you know, he he's done interviews, you know, and, and did all of these, you know, did, he's gone from person, from reporter to reporter. And because people can be like, oh, well, well, I feel this way about it. Like, this information can get passed from person to person and one person can believe one thing and another person can believe another thing. Do I think it's fair, this list of things that they want him to do to get back? No, absolutely. I don't think that's fair, but at the same time, it's just like when you put stuff out there, it can be detrimental and it can have consequences. Yeah, Uh, definitely. Sometimes. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I I think with the whole... And I'll be honest with you, like when it comes to like the Kyrie situation or even Kanye, any of those, like I I try not to comment too much onto it, not because um, I don't have an opinion on it or not so much because of I agree or disagree or any any of that at all. It's just that I'm just so tired of these type of situations constantly occurring and we, we all have emotional reactions. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times what tends to happen in these situations, like, which I always say all the time that there's always a lack of accountability. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we act, especially in our community, that if we disagree with something or, or it, or it seems like we don't support something that one of our black celebrity does, mm-hmm. then we're sellouts or we're being controlled or we're afraid, whatever it is. Right. And sometimes right. It's, it's just really a right wrong situation. So like with the Kyrie situation, I, cause, cause I've been following it. Right. And, you know, I'm a big sports guy. I love Kyrie. I don't always agree with the things that he does off the court, not off the court, on the court. Um, and what I mean by that is that, and I think that's one of the reasons why Kyrie sometimes get the backlash from the Stephen A. Smith, the Shaquille O'Neal's and so forth, because it's, right. it's a plethora of things that Kyrie does, right. That, affects 
basketball, right? Yeah. And, and and I'll kind of break that down a little bit, right? Um, it's him disappearing sometimes from his teammates and not saying anything. He did that in Boston. He did that when he came to the Brooklyn Nets, right? I remember that. Um, yeah. um, the whole vaccination thing, right? And he, you know, with, with that, right, where the whole team agreed to get vaccinated and he decided he wasn't going to do it, that affected the team, which was his choice and his right, right? So, you know, that was that. Uh, but it's it's a lot of these different things that people that don't really follow sports, but they just kind of don't know Kyrie outside of the vaccination thing in this situation. They, they kind of just jump on into it. Mm-hmm. They don't they they don't understand why some of these commentators are going hard on Kyrie. Not because they don't like it, because they'll be the first one to say like, "Yo, Kyrie, he he, he gives back. He's back. He's for his community. He does a lot of amazing things." It's it's sometimes Kyrie could be a huge distraction to his team and it affects his team. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Where like when he was in Boston, um, he got, he had a lot of issues with his teammates in Boston. Right. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. when he came to Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? It was supposed to be this whole, you know, big thing with the big three or well, not big three. It was supposed to be him and Durant and then James Harden, all that stuff. And then that got derailed because Kyrie just was kind of being Kyrie. Right. Mm-hmm. Now it's on to the issue, right? So with the with the posting, this is where to me it's like an example or a situation that we all need to kind of learn from. I think I do believe Kyrie made an honest mistake um, in it, and of course we could say, well, he wasn't promoting or whatever. But mm-hmm. the reality is, if you post something on your page, people can perceive. You may not have the attention. But people could perceive it as that, as being promoted, right? Let's just, just say, like, let's say Alex Jones, right? Um, or not even Alex Jones. Let's just say Aaron Rodgers, right, who's a white mm-hmm. football player. Let's mm-hmm. say he posted, he just randomly posts a documentary on slavery, right? And, yeah. and part of the document said that slavery didn't exist or that slaves were willing to come to the United States and were happy to be slaves, right? Let's just mm-hmm. say he just posted out, he didn't put anything. The reality is, us as a community, we would be extremely upset, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He would cast a backlash, and people would say he needs to, you know, be held accountable, yada, 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 right? Right. We would not accept it at all, right? And he could go and say, like, oh, I didn't know. I thought this was just American history or was just talking about just, you know, what took place. I had no clue this part of it. This is what Kyrie did, right? He posted something on a documentary to my understanding from what's been reported because he was searching to see his name, what his name meant. This is what Kyrie said, um, his first, first press conference regarding this. And this documentary came up and he posted it, not realizing that there's some information in this documentary that is inaccurate and false and could be looked at as anti-Semitic, right? Yeah, to absolutely. the Jewish community, whether we agree with it or not, right? This is how they perceive that and there are people in the NBA investors and so forth who are Jewish so of course they're going to have an issue with it right Mm -hmm. so he goes in he watches it and he agrees he does another press conference and he states he agrees that there are stuff in there that are that he doesn't agree with you know what I'm saying and stuff like that Um, but he doesn't give the apology that I guess the NBA, like. the media would like, right? And if you exactly. watch it, I could kind of see where they were coming from with it because he seemed more <laughs> defensive than anything. And I get it because he got deemed as being anti-Semitic, which is almost like being deemed like you're racist, right? Mm-hmm. So I get it from that standpoint, right? Um, and then so because of that, it led to more of a backlash where if he would have apologized and the Brooklyn Nets were quote-unquote stated that if he they didn't want to suspend him. They were trying to avoid this completely. They just wanted to actually just to go away, go back to playing basketball, and that was it. He makes a public apology, um, and they move forward. But because it wasn't like an authentic, quote-unquote, apology, this is what happens. Yeah. My issue with this whole situation is, one, I definitely disagree that um, with all the list of the things that he has to do to get back on the team. I feel like they're just making an example out of him. Absolutely. Um, but the other, and the other side of the fence, where I disagree too, coming from our side, because I'm, I'm, especially as I've gotten older, I've, I'm really more about right and wrong, right? And it's not, and and I feel like we stunt our growth as a community sometimes when we don't acknowledge wrong, and we just want to point fingers, right? 
Kyrie was wrong in this, right? And he admitted, he stated himself that he was wrong, right? He made a mistake, right? You know what I'm saying? We've all made mistakes. Should he be demonized for it or dehumanized for it? No, of course not. Is he anti-Semitic? He's not, right? He's definitely not, right? But did he offend a group of people? Yes, he did. You know what I'm saying? Again, whether we agreed or not, these people got offended and it, it, it is what it is, right? They got to mm-hmm. finish. There's nothing we can do to change that perception or or matter. We could be all in the uproar or whatever. And I'm not saying that we should just submit to a group of people or anything like that at all. I think this is where both groups could have a healthy conversation. Mm-hmm. And, and instead of us constantly being against each other, and I'm speaking about the, the Black community and the Jewish community, mm-hmm. this is where like we, could, we should have like a town hall meeting. And then discuss and see, like, okay, this is what we feel and how it made us feel. And then we could come in our and like, hey, well, this is these are the experiences that we have and what we deal with, you know, that makes us feel and makes us react the way we react. So we could kind of come together because at the end of the day, let's be honest, white supremacy hate us both. You get what True. I'm saying? This is like Hitler hated both. People forget that Hitler also hated black people. He was racist against black people. Um, and he actually not only wanted to get rid of the Jews. Remember, he wanted a whole Aryan white race, blue eyes, blonde hair. That was a perfect race in his eyes. Anything less than that was like not human in his eyes. So it's not like the hatred he had for the Jews, he had hatred for black people too. It's just that the Holocaust and the genocide, he predominantly affected the Jewish population during that time, right? Mm -hmm. So we have, I feel like we have more in common than not in common. And this is the part where it's like, I hate where it's like, instead of like, like they started going against LeBron James because he did in a press conference and he said that he felt that Kyrie made a mistake and he offended people. Now I'm seeing, you know, black people are like calling, the, now LeBron a sellout. You know what I'm saying? And saying that, oh, he's being controlled by his Jewish masters and so forth. And that's like, oh God, bro, it's this, this is what, and this is what, this proves my point, what I mean. Like, because we disagree or we call out something that, yes, it was wrong. But does it mean that he's a bad person? It's like, oh, now you're a sellout. Now you're this. Now you're that. This is the same LeBron James that we praise, that we idolize. The same LeBron James who created a school in, in, in Akron, Ohio, back in his hometown. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This is the same LeBron James who, who speaks up every single time when it comes to black issue. This is the same LeBron James with that they told him to shut up and just dribble. And he still stood up. And was like, yo, we we gotta rock these Black Lives Matter shirts, you know what I'm saying? And and I, I'm I'm gonna rock and support um, for the, my black people. This is saying LeBron James, where people will say he's more the goat than Michael Jordan because he mm-hmm. Michael because LeBron James was not afraid to speak out when it came to pol- police brutality against black people. Now they're calling him a sellout and saying that oh he's afraid uh-huh. of his white Jewish people. You know what I'm saying that probably controls him this down the third and yada yada yada. This is my point with everything and with our whole conversation where it's like we, we get emotionally, we emotionally react and we emotionally start posting things that are just not true or inaccurate or just don't tell the full story or because we disagree with something. Yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's all Absolutely. of a sudden that now we're brainwashed or we're the sheep. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and you're just being controlled and afraid by the masses it's just sad bro it's it's a sad day we live in you know i wish we could be more like our, our our jewish brothers and sisters where they but the one thing i can say about them is that they're very unified and they, they shut things down when when things come out right um i i hate which the, i wish we can do that because we don't yes me too like the messed up part is like the biggest gang in the world is not the bloods or the crips it, it, or, or like whatever other gang there is out there, it's the media. That's the mm-hmm. hugest gang in the world. Because they, if you look at what they're doing, they put in, they're putting and pitting people against other people all the time. And we and, fall and, for and it all. The yo, time. and we fall for it. We take the bait. Like somebody had to from media had to ask LeBron that question. Like, hey, what do you feel about Kyrie? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And once he he had to answer it. Because everybody was like looking waiting at for the, LeBron. Waiting for that answer. Yeah, bruh. And, and he could, when he could have just said, he could have just said this, like, yo, I don't want to answer that. But the thing is, yo, right now, LeBron James is the face of basketball, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, what do you think, LeBron? 
like we need to put this we need that we need a headline and you know it's funny even if he would have said that like i don't want to comment on it yeah he still would have caught some type of exactly oh, yeah. it's, like, it's, it's like it's like a damn if you do damn if you don't if he, he would have like, you know lost a lot of sponsorships bro yeah if he would have said Kyrie was i didn't see nothing wrong with that Kyrie did you know what i'm saying with Kyrie, then he would have caught backlash in one end right Mm-hmm. If he him saying what he said that he disagreed with Kyrie did he did he offended people which which he didn't say anything that was inaccurate because mm-hmm. he technically he did offend people you know what I'm saying that caused harm to people right. you know what I'm saying um and you know the stuff that he did put out not stuff that Kyrie put out that he posted you know right. what I'm saying keyword he just, he just posted you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying it caused some harm it caused some backlash I and, think and, when I before go ahead bro. No, no, no. Basically, I was going to say is like in in LeBron James situation or any other athlete or commentator such as like Stephen A. Smith or any of the sports analysts, anything that they say, you're in a situation where it's like you're going to mm-hmm. please one crowd, but you're also going to offend the other crowd at the same time. It's, mm-hmm. Again, it's like you can't really win. So all you can really do is stand in yeah. under your truth or what you believe what took place and how you see it as. Go ahead, go ahead, and sorry, go ahead, bro. I think what I would love, I would have loved him to do, um, uh, to stick, not to stick by Kyrie's side, because I hopefully I can save the freedom of speech from LeBron, um, but just to say, you know, I know Kyrie on the court and off the court, um, and I know that's not his character. He loves everybody. Um, do I agree with what he said? Definitely. Do I agree with the post? Definitely not. I myself am not anti-Semitic, um, and I definitely know that Kyrie is not. At that moment, you're standing with your brother, your bro, or if they are friends or off the court or on the court, you're standing beside someone. I don't see the Jewish community um, tearing down their tearing down each other, no. even even if they're in the media. Yeah. So it's like you could have just said, you know what? Thank you for that question. Here's a Here's my response. I, I want. To, but here's I my was, question to that though. That's like, good. No, that that's good, and 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 I, and that's a great way that he could have done it. But my question is, is that as as well is, did he not it, like? There is this perception, like you said, you said something key, and that it it if he would have said it that way, it would show that he's standing with his brother Kyrie. But who's how do we know that he's not standing standing with Kyrie, or just by him saying that Kyrie did do something wrong, mm-hmm. that he's not standing? I, I think, like again, if we, I think when it comes to us as the black community, especially, mm-hmm. is that we it's so hard for us to please each other, right? Mm-hmm. Again, no matter what we do, no matter what we say, somebody's going is not going is going to be upset or is going to be mad or whatever, right? And it's like we always have to kind of like. Yeah. Do this, okay. If if I don't show that I'm standing with my brother, quote unquote, in the eyes of the masses of our of our people, again, I'm a seller, right? So I'll use YSL for an example. YSL, right? You know, the moment that the Rico charge got put out there, and a lot of the YSL YSL members got indicted. Not, they didn't get indicted yet, but they got um, arrested. We saw all these free young thug, free gunner, free all the stuff for the cases. And there was a few people saying, like, hey, why are we saying free this? You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, if they caught a Rico charge and there's links to people within their team or the, or, or their gang, because it is a known gang, it's a fact, mm-hmm. that has murdered, robbed some people, why are we saying this? If it was one of our, our fam that got affected by it, why not? But it's like this code of ethics, like, but we're not supposed to say that. We're supposed to say free, free them and then that's it. If, if, if T.I. or let's say Jeezy or whoever was to say like, hey, you know what? Listen, what they did, what they did probably did was wrong. You know what I'm saying? And we got to wait till the investigation. I don't really stand for what they're being charged for. They would have got called to sell out. They're not standing with their brother with the cases. But it's like, mm-hmm. my point is like, it's almost like we can't say that, hey, bro, you was wrong on this. You know what I'm saying? Because um, if we do, it's going to proceed like I'm not standing with you. But sometimes... It's like in order to help save your brother, you gotta let them know like you was wrong on this, so that person doesn't repeat that same mistake again. It's like we en- we enable, and I'm not saying what Kyrie did was bad behavior or or anybody is bad behavior. What I'm saying is that what I've noticed is like we do not want to 
we don't want to correct behavior at all. We just yeah. want to kind of either like just sweep it under the rug and stand together. And we wonder why that we see these constant situations happen. We see with Kanye. Kanye is another prime example. When Kanye was going through making these erratic behaviors and erratic posts, it's like people were defending him. And anytime somebody called him out, it was like, well, try to call him out. You're a sellout. You're this. You're that. Blah, blah, blah. With the kids. You're not standing with, Ky- with Kanye. Talib Kweli was one of them where he caught a lot of backlash. And Talib Kweli, he was saying like, yo, Kanye's my brother. You know what I'm saying? I've known Kanye from when he first came in. Even when he said things about me, the reason why I'm calling him out and I've called him out in his face, I'm not one of these just men, is because I love him so much and I don't want to see his life and his career spiral out of control. But mm-hmm. because I say I disagree with him or I'm saying like, you're wrong on this, People are saying that I'm not standing with my brother when in actuality I am standing with him. I'm holding him accountable by standing with him. Mm-hmm. He just doesn't want it and people just don't see it. Right. It's like we got to right. sugarcoat everything because, again, we don't want to offend. But instead of offending, it's like, I, I don't know, man. It, it, it's just, it, it's a different time that we're living in, unfortunately, man. And I feel like it's just all a distraction. That's just it my. Is. It is. Yeah, it's- definitely especially with the internet being what it is. Like, it's a tape recorder. It's like, it records it, locks it down, and holds it, right? Holds all yeah. the information. Anything you ever post, anything you ever say, expressions, pictures you've taken, all of that. Somebody sees it, even if you put it up for just a little bit, right? Like, shoot, I thought it was crazy when they were going back and searching jokes that were made by comedians from freaking early 2000s. Like, and then holding them accountable to these jokes. I was like, could mm-hmm. you imagine them them talk talking about like, okay, Eddie Murphy, we saw this joke you made in 1987 on, on Raw, and we, we're going to hold that against you about this community. You, you made these jokes. I'm like, bro, you would have to, you know how much work you have to do to go to every comedian, dead or alive. It makes you cancel everybody. Yeah, everybody you would, you would have to. You would have to, but then you got to remember that uh, comedy is such a raw form that and it, it in take... itself you can't you can't literally can't be politically correct with it all the time. I, so that my question that my a question I, I thought about this morning is from what you're saying, Fred, mm-hmm. is the black voice do the black voice have a freedom of speech? Can, I'm, I'm a, and, can and we I'll, correlate that to because I'm thinking about because you, you brought up the jokes from yes. two or five two to try yes. two to five years ago and yes. I'm thinking about um Kevin Hart yes. how a joke that yes he admit that he said mm-hmm. and he said it at that time but in the same perspective he was going up for an Oscar or he was gonna um host the Oscar, host the Oscar yes. and the way they just dragged him mm-hmm. to the mud. And it's like Whoa. after he apologized before too. He, exactly. He apologized numerous times prior to that too. And it's like, before yo, us. I'm done a apo- and the way he did it mm-hmm. was beautiful media um publicity. It's like, yo, I apologize. I know my heart. You know what, Oscar? I don't even want it anymore. Yeah. So I, I think, think I think mm-hmm. I'm I'm curious to what you guys think is can we are we able to two questions I ask myself. My mom always said this to me, you're a black man and you cannot make mistakes. Cool. And I never understood that to be until I became an adult. And then the second one is are do is freedom of speech is freedom of speech correlated to us? Because social media, when you do posts, it's a it's a correlation of freedom of speech. So, what is the definition, or how do we define freedom of speech in the twenty first century for the black man? I mean, I think with freedom of speech is like what people sometimes mistake or forget rather is that we are allowed to say what we want to say. Like, there's other there's countries where, like, say Cuba, for example, when um um what was the dictator's name um uh. My gosh, it's like right there. Nah, uh, Fidel no, Castro. That... Fidel yes, Castro. Yes. You cannot say anything about Fidel Castro or you're you're going to jail. Oh uh, damn. Period. <laughs> Period. You know what I'm saying? Or there's and there's other countries like in North Korea where if you say anything against the government, anything about the government or anything, even like 
if there's a new you post a news article just be saying like, hey, you know, I don't like this policy or I disagree with this policy, you're going to jail where they can execute you. Yeah. You know I'm saying they don't have free speech at all, right? With us, it's different. We do have freedom of speech, but here's the thing, here's a caveat people forget that freedom of speech does not mean that you're not gonna be held accountable for what you say if you say something that does deem to be offensive. Like you're not going to jail, right? You're not being executed, at least not physically being executed. Um, but if you do say something that could be deemed offensive, yes, you can be held accountable for it in some way. So is it freedom of speech? Yes, but not really. You know what I'm saying? Um, to kind of answer that that question, especially as Black people, and I think that's the other part that we got to remember that it doesn't matter how much we try to we, we argue and try to fight this. We have to always understand that we're we're always going to be held to a different standard, right? Um, in the eyes of America, anything that we do, we're going to be crucified much more worse, right? If we if, if you have somebody who is white, you know what I'm saying, who um, commits murder, right? Mm -hmm. The same type of murder, right? And then you have somebody who's black who commits murder as well. The same type of murder as a white person. There is a uh, more than a high likely chance that we we as as uh, that black person is going to receive a much more harsher sentence Absolutely. than a white person, right? Mm -hmm. It's just what it is. We have to like you like your mom said Anthony so beautifully is like as a black man you cannot make any mistakes. We can't. You know what I'm saying? Because if we make that mistake, they're gonna look at us like, "Well, they don't." They're gonna look at us like, "Well, you made this mistake. Now you gotta reap the consequences of it." And unfortunately, those consequences are gonna be much more harsh. It's gonna much be much more punishable. You know what I'm saying? We we we're constantly gonna be walking in this thin and fine line, unfortunately. And the more we are against each other as a black community, we just make it worse because we're so divided. So you know, all the time, and that doesn't help the situation at all either. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're, we're just so divided. We don't stick together. We don't try to form an alliance. We don't maybe go behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? And like, all right, yo, this something that this person did was wrong. Let's go behind the scenes to try to fix it. You know what I'm saying? Hold that person accountable. Do whatever it is and stick together. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, it's just this constant um, divide. And yeah. unfortunately, whatever that you've done in the past, People and and nowadays want to bring it to light to set an example as well. People could be so upset at Kyrie and be like, "Yo, look how they're trying to crucify him and stuff like that." At all in social media, mm -hmm. but these are the same people in social media. And I'm and I'm and I'm speaking to our people. Yeah. They will go back and look at a repost by by somebody else and crucify and bring that. Oh, look what this person did. Look what that person did, and try to crucify that person. It's like the things that we point the finger at is the same thing that we do to ourselves as well. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is that we are, um, to answer your question, Anthony, um, do we have freedom of speech? I think it's to a certain extent, you know, it's to a certain extent. Freedom of speech is in a box right now. I feel like um, you can only talk about certain things to a certain level. I think the, the same rules apply in comedy. There's a way to walk um, into an issue and be able to talk about it. And then there's just people that don't really care. They're like, I'm going to talk about this issue because they, they're they tacticians. They can really do it in a certain way. You know, like Chappelle, you know, like Chris Rock. There's certain people that are seasoned that can do it, right? And then you have certain people that are just careless, you know, and don't care at all. And I feel like with our community and just black men, I feel like there is a need to censor us a lot, right? Um, within our community. Um, can we make mistakes? I think, yeah, I do think we can make mistakes, but you gotta have the money to cover it. That's the point blank period. Yeah. As a black man, you you better have the money to cover that mistake. If you don't, then you better keep your mouth shut and don't make no mistakes. You know what I'm saying? It's, it all depends on how much status you have. You need money to go to war. And, bruh. You always hear that. You need bruh, money to always. go to war. Always, because if you don't, money talks, man, more than anything. Damn. And like you said, Anthony, in a previous podcast, money is that language that speaks, that helps speak uh, volumes like when you're not even in a room because they talk about how much you're worth and who you are. But other than that, 
I think we just to echo what Jeff is saying, it's like we need to focus on how we speak to one another. I said in a previous podcast, like I wish we could get back to that Black Panther mentality Mm -hmm. where we're militant and we look out for each other and we love each other. We build up our community. But it's hard to do that in an information age where everybody is so divided and everybody's trying to start this firestorm of information where it's like, okay, I literally seen them like when, okay, for instance, like when Chris Brown got accused by by that woman, right? He got accused, a woman accused him of taking advantage of her. And then now when things come out immediately, I'm like, okay, there's two sides to every story. Mm -hmm. I always, always want to give somebody the benefit of the doubt before I hear anything else. Come to find out this woman was lying Mm -hmm. and they had receipts, you know, and so they exposed that and the case was dropped. But my thing is like, what happens to, as Jeff always says, why don't we hold these people accountable? Like, like people can cry wolf and do all of these things or people can hold you accountable to what you said, but never look into their backyard about what they said. People Mm. will, after Kobe freaking died with his daughter, people Mm. were talking about his, the rape case. Mm -hmm. Like that was dismissed, bruh. That was dismissed. Michael Jackson got acquitted twice in two different cases. They tried to bring him up on allegations a third time. Mm-hmm. And all of these parents were money hungry. He got proved innocent every single mm-hmm. time. And people will say, oh, it's because it's money. I'm like, no, it's because he was innocent. Mm-hmm. But, but I the, call the this, the, I call this media, media frames it. Yeah, I really do call this media lynching, bro. It is. I don't see, bro. And hopefully, Jeff or Fred, if you guys can help me out, I don't see them doing this to white people. The only person I've seen this person that do this to is Cuomo. Mm, I, um, when they he really was, got him. It, when they he got was, him it, yeah. Him and his brother. So I, I really don't see it. But um, I think I mean, it, it does think, happen to white people, cut but no one. Anthony, it yeah, got cut deep enough. If, if the cut is deep, like like with Weinstein. Yeah. If the cut was so deep. They went in on him. They went in on him. He's, he's Jewish. He runs. Uh, helps run. He ran a lot of ho- Hollywood, and he's still in jail. They went in on him, bro. I seen a new documentary that's coming out on him, uh, uh, freaking this fall. So they still going in on him. But the cut, I think the cut has to be deep enough. You have to hurt yeah. enough people. Yeah, it definitely has to be much more deeper. It has to. Um, again, they always going to set an example on us, but doesn't mean like it's not happening other. Um, racist is just that again like i agree with fred said like the cut has to be extremely extremely um deep you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying and, and this goes back to what you was, what you said fred i mean not fred um anthony but your mom said is like we can't really afford to make the mistakes or we can't make the same mistakes as everybody else because we're just mm-hmm. again we're held to a different standard we don't have as much wiggle room all you need is just like a paper cut and they're lynching you that's it while them it, there has to be like you know it has to be super deep inflicted all the way into the room the meat hanging out the white meat hanging out paws and all of that and for them to like super paws <laughs> so, so, so it has to like you know be shown like like weinstein or or um what's what's the guy that uh jeff epstein yeah, yeah. Him, 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 him as well. You know what I'm saying? So it, it happens. It's just that, but us, it's, it's but so how good. Jeffrey Epstein or these white men are crucified in the media, that's crucified as a maybe one day, maybe two days. Nah, they crucified much longer than that, bro. Yo, no, they, bro, he's still in jail. Weinstein's still, Weinstein's still in jail. Bro. He lost it. They did a whole doctor every Jeff Epstein. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> Epstein died before they could get him, but they got his wife. Yeah. They they got what's your call? Yeah. And that was in that was still all over the media. But what I think sometimes too is that we're so consuming to our own media. Like mm-hmm. if it doesn't make the shade room and stuff like that, it's like so, we, I'll we be think asking myself what happened. I'll be asking myself, real talk, bros. I'll be asking myself, does anything happen in the country? Or pop era, because I'm like, can, can we get a break? Can our culture get a break? And I think what, and I, I think we said it's in our IG live, or I think me and my um Jeff were having a conversation. Our culture need therapy at this moment, and the media, and we're going back to the conversation of 
it go back to the conversation. Social media is not doing a great job because what they're pouring out is negativity. So right. your brain cannot take negativity. Where it's like we are now in like you know how when you're in jail and you go down in the hole. I forgot what they call it. Solitary uh, confinement. Solitary yep. confinement. You are literally, literally getting. You're literally getting this twenty four seven on your Apple Watch. Some people have it in their eyes, like those cameras, like the, those glasses that you can look up and stuff like that. They have their glasses, the eyes, the TV, the laptop, the notification that pops up on the right right corner of your screen of Before. something that's happening. So you're visually seeing these things. Mm-hmm. So you're confined to those thoughts. They don't they don't go away. It's an algorithm. Mm-hmm. And I and I think I love what Fred and and, and Jeff does. Sometimes it's like, yo, I gotta take a break. Yeah. Jesus you know I, Christ, I gotta take a break it's because too much. it's too much. Yeah, like what I did was like I I actually it was this was actually after our IG live is what I actually did. I went in through my page and I started unfollowing. I unfollowed like the Shade Room and those type of sites. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, like, I was like, I unfollowed them. I was like, I'm not following these pages no more because it's it's too much. Like I, I'm tired of seeing such negativity and so much like just the way we get portrayed and perceived, you know what I'm saying, as our you know, as as black people. And like I don't see a lot of positivity get posted in these pages. They'll spring yeah. from here and there. You know That's what I'm good. saying? But overall, it, it, it's just always gonna be just these controversy like i like i'm tired of seeing like these posts about black women saying like you know you know men ain't this right niggas ain't this or black men saying black women you know they ain't this ain't that it's yeah. like i only see it in this deep in those pages yeah you know what i'm saying it's like i'm taking this all because now negativity it, sells it, it creates this narrative thinking that people are going to think yeah. like, like you said anthony like this was a perfect example is that you said like you don't really see other like p- white people get lynched the way that we do, and then me and Ant, I mean Ant, yeah, Fred and I gave the example like well there are a few, and I think what happens is sometimes because when we get and that's the reason why I stopped following the shade room rules and sites is like if we only just get consumed to what we see in social media and the pages that we follow, we think that's really just the only world that really exists, Damn. and there are so many of. These young kids that oh, are coming up. I was just about to go that route. That's yeah. all they watch and that's all they follow. So they think whatever is, if it's not on the shape room, it's not yep. happening. It's true. Yep. If it's not, if it's not on Hollywood Unlock or Unlock Unlock Hollywood, whatever it's called, it's not happening. If it's not on ball alert, it's not taking place. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's it's and it's it's like our our mind is so, is just warped to yeah. only that. And this is not me trying to throw shade at them. It's just, yo, I'm just speaking fast. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to say this too. Like, uh, I wanted to give a scripture too. Whenever I think of fake news and gossip and all this other stuff in the media, I always come back to this scripture, Isaiah 59 and 7. Mm. Their feet run to do evil and they rush to commit murder. They think only about sinning, misery, and destruction always follows them. So I always think about that scripture because it's not as literal as them committing murder, but it might as well be because of the false information and what it does to our society, our community. Because think about oh, it. Sad. All of this stuff, all of this stuff we talked about, y'all, this the fake news. It doesn't leave any room for us to be empowered as a race, right. as a as a group of people. If y'all think about when we grew up, we are 80s babies, right? So the thing is, is we had black entertainment television back when it was, you know, black people on TV and it really was talking about our empowerment, us, our musicians, uh, like our news and us achieving so much. Oh, then man. it, it mm-hmm. took a turn. Mm-hmm. It took a turn mm-hmm. at a point, right? And so it became less about empowerment and more about another, another E word, which is exploitation. So I, I think we we are as a as a race we are getting exploited at every turn and we're yeah. doing it to ourselves the worst and yeah. just like jeff said 
he had to clock out, bro, of the shade room. He had to take, you know, he had to shut down. Me, I got, I do that on a daily. I just did a, got off of a month fast of social media because I had to realize like, yo, I can live without this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was a life before all of this. I yeah. need to, I need to like get my brain off of like picking up this phone every 10 minutes, you know, Facts. and I, it's, it's just so much news coming at you at a point. Like we know so much about celebrities Facts. That, that we should not know. Facts. And, uh, and, 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 and everybody and, pulling up their business. Jesus. Yeah, and then fights, oh, seeing God. young, young men dying so true, man. every yeah. day. Oh my I God. think I think Walmart is like the Jerry Springer fights going on at every Walmart. Shout oh. out to my bro George. <laughs> yeah, Walmart's in the Walmart. Shout out to George. Whoa, man, so all a ma- there's, there's a fight going on right now at the Waffle House. Facts. Yeah, there's a fight going on at Walmart right now. I can guarantee you. <laughs> and s- on the, on the and somebody's day, recording it. Unfortunately. Somebody's recording it. They're gonna post it, and it's gonna probably go viral. Cause that's what yeah. people want. they want to go viral. No matter how offensive it is, no matter how bad it is, no matter how much it may make us look bad. Yeah. If it's if it's gonna if it's gonna give them the ability to go viral. Right. Gonna... I said this before. We lost. We lost empathy. Yes. One hundred percent. It did. And, and we lost empathy, to, bro. I can relate it to running with scissors. It, running with fake news to the internet to post it because that's what it's like is running with scissors like well it's, us, it's people crying wolf and saying all of this negative stuff and then they never take accountability for it Facts. and it's out there it's like all of these people saying this black person did this I'm like bro y'all know what we missed the biggest example of this is Emmett Till Ooh. it's mm-hmm. Emmett Till point blank mm-hmm. period is that because that happened because of fake news? Yeah, Ooh, it was that's fake a prime example. News. Big like example. year after year after year after year, a movie just came out about it. Go see Till, definitely. Oh, yeah. Um, and so it, the thing is, that is a part of American history that helped spark the civil rights movement. Yeah. And the the messed up part is that. She never got the woman never got held accountable for that. So I can see why alive. Anthony feels the way that he feels. Because she's still alive too. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, she's still alive. on American so, soil, bruh. And the thing is, we and y'all expect us not to be crazy. Y'all mm. expect us to not mm. go crazy every now That's... and again. We got to see black bodies on TV. Oof. You know what I'm saying? We 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 gotta go be week a after week. So yeah. it's so if you look back at slavery, <laughs> mm-hmm. I correlate this to slavery uh, a lot of times because uh, history repeats itself in a different way. But it's just like you have to be able to know history. Absolutely. So there's a point in the in, in the slave house where they will whoop the strongest person. Mm-hmm. The, whoop the oh my god, they will whoop that person. Mm-hmm. Um, and if this is triggering for someone, I apologize, but we have to be able to learn about history. Um, so they will whoop this person, and it's the strongest person, and they will place this person in the front of the yard. Mm-hmm. And the reason why they place it in the front of the yard, so they will make sure to know this can happen to you. Mm-hmm. Once again, this can happen to you, and kids are playing like literally, kids are playing around this person. Mm-hmm. Um, people are walking like nothing is happening around this person, yeah. Why? Yeah. Because they have become to normalize this type of action and realizing, yo, this can happen to me, and I'm scared. Absolutely. There's this one song that I really love. I was listening to yesterday on my way home from a prayer meeting, and then after I picked up Joanna as well from work, and it's called Black Gold. I can't remember the name of the artist. Uh, she's kind of she has like a jazzy type of neo soul feel to it. Um, Yo, send that in the chat, uh, bro. I'll send it in the chat, but it's called Black Gold, and she basically just you know singing about like how black excellence and how blacks. And this is more specifically for black men. But I yeah. think, but it goes just for all of us. Like, 
yo, we're special. You know what I'm saying? We are, yeah. we're golden. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's like, black gold, black gold, you are black gold. That's how it goes, like the chorus, the hook. I love it. And and I love the song. Just one more time, can you sing it again? Uh, nah, because I'm going to <laughs> But I, but I feel like the reason I'm bringing it up because I feel like if we could acknowledge ourselves as that and that type of music yeah. gets promoted more and that image get promoted more, we could start move, we could see ourselves as that and then we could stop. I mean, it, we can't stop racism, racism, yeah. right? It, it, we can't stop white supremacy. I think that's something that's going to be with us till the end of time, right? Unfortunately, um, if we're going to be honest, like because it's just. We just, it's the world that we live in, the society we live in. It's, just what America, it's what America was built on. Absolutely. And, they're, and they're not letting that go. But what we can do is we could try to stop self-inflicting hate towards each other. Yeah. Um, and, and negativity towards each other and start and stop being at odds with each other. Because it's like black men mm. against black men, black men against black women, black women against black women, black women against black men. We're always at odds. The young generation against the older generation. I think everybody's people, at odds, man. I think if people mm-hmm. understood their history, yeah, and understand, and we teach it to the point where you are, you see it live and direct. Mm-hmm. When when a black person buys a house, I am so proud of them because mm-hmm. there's something called redlining. When someone is in the top of the government, mm-hmm. a, a a black woman, shout out to Stacy at Stacy, um. What's the last it, it, name? Stacey Abram. Stacey Abram. Yeah. Um, she lost, but shout out to her. Man. Shout out to her because she's doing an amazing job. Mm-hmm. When people are going to HBCU promoting colleges, yeah. there is a time in history that a black man or woman was not able to even have these type of privilege. Yes. Couldn't even vote. Couldn't even vote. Mm-hmm. And and people take these stuff from granted man yeah, yeah. that's why yeah, i was people, out there voting yesterday people, i made people sure for, people forget that we weren't allowed to vote until 1967 so 1967 is around the corner bro is it 19 yeah. not 18 not 17 19. not 15 19. 19 bro that was 13 years after i was born because i was born bro, in 80 so that's how crazy 13 that years after i was born come on man so 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 what does that tell you bro it tells you a lot I, I love this conversation, fellas. And I, I would say, what is, as we wrap this conversation up, what is one last message that uh, you would want to say to our village that's listening about this conversation? Before you pick up a gun, pick up a book and read. I love it. Definitely, definitely, man. What um, about you, Jeff? For me, it's, you know, um, stop fake news and just spread truth, man. It's truth and love. I love the, it. I love the, it. In my community. Yeah. I, w- I would say mine would be a quote. Uh, in the words of the man, Rodney King, can't we all just get along? Just That's it. Can't we all just get along? And I just, and, and to add a little bit on to that, it's just like, let's disconnect from the fake. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's detrimental to us. Uh, I love this conversation, fellas. This is going to be one to empower. Yeah. Definitely. And uh I look forward to having more conversations like this. Uh, Facts. To, to figure out how we can build and add more council people, add more community builders, add more social entrepreneurs because top shelf village, we cannot do this by ourselves. Absolutely. Please not. let us know how we can do a part two. Yes. Leave a comment, leave something. Yeah. Because we yo, like we said in our IG live this Monday. It's, the change really starts with us. Absolutely. So until next time, Top Shelf family, we love you guys. And Peace. Peace. One love.